Hi everyone, welcome to TechPrint YouTube channel where we unlock the secrets to build faster and smarter applications. Today, we are diving into a game changer for app performance, Redis Caching. Stick around because by the end of this video, you will learn how to set up Redis, integrate it with Fast API, and supercharge your app's performance 10 times faster. By the end of this video, you'll be able to understand the concepts and importance of Redis Caching. Set up Redis and integrate it with a fast API application. Implement caching to speed up your application. Debug common issues related to Redis caching. Imagine you are running an app with millions of users. Every time they load a page, your database is bombarded with requests. Over time, this slows everything down. Caching to the rescue. Here is why caching is a must have for modern application. Number one. Reduce latency. Caching stores frequently access data closer to the user, making retrieval lightning fast. Number two, enhance scalability. By reducing the load on your primary database, your app can handle more user efficiently. Number three, cost efficiency. Fewer database queries mean less strain on your infrastructure. Number four, which is the last one, improve user experience. Faster responses equal happier users. Who doesn't love a snappy app? Not everything in your app needs caching, but here is what should be on your radar. Number one, frequently accessed data. Think products catalogs, user profiles or app settings, static or rarely changing data, configuration files or public content like blog posts, expensive computation save the results of heavy calculations or complex database queries. Session data. Keep user session information handy. API responses. Avoid repeated calls to external APIs by caching responses. Before you go all in on caching, let's weigh the pros and cons. Now let's talk about the pros. Caching speeds up data retriever and it also reduces load on primary databases. It enhances scalability, improves user experience, and on the other hand, it has its cons. It adds complexity to your app architecture. It can lead to stale or inconsistent data if not managed properly. It requires additional memory resources. Imagine this, your app receives thousands of requests every second. Each one has to query a database, sometimes for the same piece of data. The results, your database is overwhelmed, responses are delayed and users are frustrated. Traditional data retrieval method rely heavily on persistent data stores like MySQL. Why? Why these databases are reliable? They are not designed to handle repeated queries for frequently accessed data at high speeds. This creates what we call the bottleneck problem. Here's how it works traditionally. The client sends a request to the server. The server checks the catch. If the data is there, a catch it and it is returned instantly. But if the data is not in the catch, a catch miss. The server queries the persistent database, retrieves the data, and primes the catch for future requests. This look efficient, right? But what happens when there is no catching layer? Every single request hits the database, which slows everything down. When your app can't keep up with requests you face, this slows response time. Users waiting for pages to load will bounce. It will also increase cost. Scaling your database infrastructure to handle the load can get expensive and also poor user experience. Frustrated users mean fewer returning customers. And this is not just theory. Think about e-commerce apps during a sale or social media platforms during a major event. The stakes are high. That is where Redis comes in. Fast in-memory data store to bridge the gap between your app and the database. By catching frequently accessed data, Redis reduces the load on your database and makes your app lightning fast. So what is Redis? Redis stands for Remote Dictionary Server. It is an in-memory data store which means it stores data in your server's RAM, making it super fast. You can use Redis as a database to store key value pairs. You can also use it as a catch to store frequently accessed data and a message broker to manage communication between different parts of your system. It is lightweight, reliable, and easy to set up. Now let's talk about why catching is such a game changer. Every app today aims for lightning fast response times. Catching helps you achieve that by reducing data base load. Instead of querying your database for the same data repeatedly, you retrieve it from Redish. Improving response times. Frequently accessed data is served almost instantly from Redish. 
and Reddish is one of the best tools for caching because it is incredibly fast, lightweight and integrates seamlessly with your apps. Let us highlight the key benefits of using Reddish caching in your application. Number one, faster data retriever. Queries that took seconds can now take milliseconds, can now take milliseconds. The second point is it's reduced database load. Your database doesn't have to work over time, even under heavy traffic. The third point is it improves scalability. Redis helps your app and do more users without breaking a sweat. With Redis, you will notice a massive improvement in both performance and user experience. Here's what we will cover in this video series. Number one, how to set up Redis. Number two, setting how to set up the Python environment. Number three, how to write a fast API application with Redis caching. Number four, how to start the Redis server. Number five, how to test the application and how to debug common issues. Installing Redis is straightforward. Here is how you can do it on your operating system. For Linux, run sudo apt get install Redish. For Mac user, use homebrew with the common brew install Redish. And for Windows users, you can install Redish from this website as shown on the screen. I already have Redish installed on my machine. Once Redish is installed, start the server by running Redish server. I already have it installed on my machine. Let's start the server. You can see I've successfully start Redis. And also, if to verify that everything is working perfectly, use the Redis CLI and type the command as shown on the screen, which the expected response should be Pong. Let us verify that everything is working by using the Redis CLI and type Redis CLI, which the expected output should be Pong. You can see as shown on the screen. Before we proceed, let's create a directory on our desktop. After creating the directory, you see it into the directory. Now, let us create a virtual environment. We successfully created a virtual environment. Now let's activate our virtual environment. We have our virtual environment activated. The next thing to do is to install the required libraries for this project. We successfully installed all the libraries. Before we proceed, let me quickly explain what each library means and what they do. So Fast API is the core framework we will use to build our web application. It is fast, modern, and designed for APIs. Why Redish is a library that lets us interact with our Redish server from Python. Also, Essential, since fast API is asynchronous by nature, we use Essential to undo our background tax efficiently. So open your Visual Studio code. Now let's start coding. We'll walk through the complete code for building a fast API application with Redish caching. So I will explain every single line of code so you will understand exactly how it works. Let's dive right in. We have main.py created. Here's the foundation of our app. Fast API, this is our main framework for building the web application. Then we have HTTP exception which is used for handling errors and sending proper HTTP status codes. Likewise, we have the Redis Essential, which allows us to interact asynchronously with the Redis server. Likewise, we have the Essential Libraries, which enables asynchronous operations, such as waiting for data. We import JSON, which helps us to serialize and deserialize data when storing it in Redis. We have base model, from Pydantic, it is used to define our data models with validation. We also initialize the fast API app by, by calling fast API method. This is the entry point for our application. We declare a global variable Redis client and set it to none initially. This will hold our Redis connection. Fast API provides event hooks for actions that should happen when the app starts or shuts down. So the startup events. Here, we initialize a connection to the Redis server using Redis. We specify local host as the host, then 6379 as the ports and enable the code responses to true to ensure Redis responses are in a readable format. We declare a function to shut down events. When the app shuts down, we close the Redis connection to clean up resources. These events 
ensure that our Redis connection is properly managed throughout the application's life cycle. This item model defines the structure of the data we'll be working with. The ID is an integer identifier for the item, then the name of the item as a string, and also a detailed description of the item. Using Pydatic ensures that any data sent to or from our API matches this format. Since we are not using a real database here, we've created a simple dictionary to simulate one. It contains some sample data that we can fetch. And also we include the EPA function to fetch data from database. This function mimics fetching data from a real database. It takes an item ID as input. It uses essential sleep function to simulate a delay, representing the time it takes to query a database. Finally, it retrieves the corresponding item from the database dictionary. This gives us a realistic simulation of database operations without the complexity of setting up an actual database. Here's the art of our application. Let us break it down step by step. The app get decorator defines an endpoint where we can fetch items by their item ID. Then we construct a unique cache key using the item ID and check if the item is already cached in Reddish. If it is found, we deserialize it using the JSON load method and return it immediately. If the item is not cached, we fetch it from the simulated database using the fetch item from DB function. If the item does not exist, we raise a 404 not found exception. Finally, we store the fetched item in Reddish using the Reddish client set function, setting an expiration time of 60 seconds. This approach drastically improves performance for frequently accessed data by reducing database load. We create a route that allows us to manually clear the catch for a specific item. It constructs the same catch key as before, deletes the corresponding entry from Reddish using Reddish client delete function, returns a confirmation message. Now let's test our code. To test our code, let's run the following command. Our code is running successfully. Now let's test the endpoint by fetching an item by its ID. Now you can see our endpoint works successfully. One of the most common problems you will encounter when working with Redish is connection issues. If your first API app cannot connect to the Redish server, follow the steps to troubleshoot. First, make sure the Redish server is up and running as we did earlier. This command will start the Redish server as displayed on the screen. You should see a message indicating it is running on localhost 6379. Next, check your connection details in the Reddish client configuration in your Fast API app. Check your connection details in the Reddish client configuration in your Fast API app. This will look like this. If your Reddish server is not running on the default host or port, update these details to match your configuration. And as we did earlier, you can also test the connection directly by running the command reddish cli ping. If everything is working, you should see the response pong as shown on the screen. If not, double check your server setup and firewall settings. Once the connection is working, the next step is to verify that your data is being cached as expected. This is especially useful when debugging performance issues or testing your caching logic. Once the connection is working, the next step is to verify that your data is being cached as expected. This is especially useful when debugging performance issues or testing your caching logic. To inspect the cached data, open the Reddish CLI. List all the cached keys. You can see it said MTRA, which means nothing is being cached. Now let's try to test our app again and run the same command. 
So let's really run our app. We try to list the cached keys. It's display the item. Redis caching is an incredible powerful tool to boost your application's performance with proper setup or debugging practices. You can ensure faster response times, reduce database load, and a seamless user experience. Integration with Fast API is straightforward, and with the tips we've covered, you are well equipped to handle any issue that comes your way. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Drop your question or debugging challenges in the comments below. I do love to help. See you in the next video.